Hey, it's Skylar here from The Men's Change You Can Wear. Today we're making a really cool ring. Or at least I think it's a really cool ring. I found one of these guys. It is a pure silver half ounce Incuse Indian. The reason they call it Incuse is because the design is inset instead of sticking out of the coin. And it makes for a really awesome ring. For whatever reason, I have an allergic reaction to pure silver. So I'm thinking about lining it with something. And I'm gonna be lining it with this. It's a little bag of scrap gold that I have from other projects. So the first step, get that NQC Indian made into a ring. Let's do it. And the first step we're gonna to need to do is cut a hole in it. And what I really want to do is have a thinner band, not too thin. I want these stars and the date to be the main feature of it. So what I would normally do is cut a half inch hole in a coin about this size. But that makes a pretty wide band, so I don't wanna do that. I'm thinking about going all the way up to a big 7 8 inch hole. Let's cut it. That is gonna work. I love the width of that band. It's a little bit thinner than my gold lumberjack. Perfect. All right, so the next couple steps we need to do, we have this sharp edge that we just cut, and that sharp edge will create cracks as we start to fold it. So we'll deburr it with our deburring tool, clean it up with some sandpaper, and then fold it. And with pure silver, I try not to anneal at all if I can avoid it. Annealing pure silver will get that rippling in the, in the detail, or reticulation it's called. So in order to avoid it, I just don't anneal if I can. We'll see how it goes. And since we're not annealing, it's always good to pull it out every now and then, sand it and check for cracks just to be extra careful. And now we have it like this, it's time to start Swedish wrapping. So now that I have it like that, it's not perfectly the shape I want to on the outside. It's still got a bit of a cone. And I want it to be just a tiny bit rounded on the outside, have a little bit of a rounded profile. And the way I'm gonna be doing that is using that Pepe Tools ring stretcher. Now we have it like that, shapes, the shape's about right. We need to cut the inside 
out and make it even on the inside. That way it'll be ready to accept the gold liner we're going to be putting into it. And you know, a lot of people will probably be wondering, why are you using a 22 karat gold liner on a silver ring? My answer? America. <laughs> and I'll be using a flex shaft with a sander, with a sander drum on it to do that. I think we're ready for our gold liner to be put in. Let's go ahead and make it. Before we start casting, we want to make sure we have all the stuff we need. So we got our mold, our ingot mold, all that sitting there, ready to go. Obviously our scrap gold that we're going to be melting down is important. We got that. Got our, our non-stick ingot spray. That way the gold doesn't stick to the ingot. That always sucks. We got our crucible, and this is the one I'm only using for 22 karat gold. I don't want to contaminate and lower the purity of my gold. My propane oxygen torch with the rosebud tip. And I'm going to use this borax for some flux. All right, so we're just going to spray this with some ingot spray, put it all together, and then heat the ingot up, and then we'll be ready to start pouring. Now that we have our gold all made into a little ingot, we're going to be rolling it into some square wire and then flattening it from there so we can make the liner for our ring. Where we're going to be doing that, we're going to be using the Pepe Tools rolling mill. Time to anneal it. I think what I'm gonna do now, just to get it evened up a little bit, is stretch on the ring stretcher like that. And then once I'm done with that, I'll make my mark, saw it, and solder it, and then we'll put it together. It's a lot closer now. So we'll make our mark now. Oh, 
Now we'll throw that in the pickle pot and once it's clean we'll go ahead and solder it. Now this thing's all cleaned and ready to start soldering. And we need to cut ourselves a little piece of some of this 22 karat solder to put it together. All right, that'll be what we need. Let's flux it and get started. All right, that's good and soldered. Throw it back in the pickle, and when it comes out, we'll go ahead and fit it. All right, it's all cleaned and out of the pickle pot, and now what we just need to do is clean up that solder joint on the outside a little bit. This kind of thing, when you start stretching, it will end up splitting, or it can split. So what we'll do is file that down a little bit, some sandpaper, and then clean up this outside just a tiny bit so it sits nice and smooth. Then we'll put it in our coin ring and start to stretch it. All right, that'll work for now. Let's try stretching it and see what happens. All right, so now we need to stretch it with a cone. What we're going to be doing is getting this flared out so it's all the way against the silver coin. And that's going to hold it in place. We're not going to need to solder it at all in place. It'll stay right where it's put. And I'm picking a die that the ring will not fit into. So it doesn't quite fit into the die. It'll just sit on top. And we'll push the cone into here. And this is going to flare it out. And that's what's going to hold the whole thing into place. We'll do that on this side. Then we'll flip it around and do the same thing on that side. And then we'll, more likely than not, we'll press it like that. Just make sure everything's in there nice and tight. And at this point, it's locked in. It's not sliding or doing anything now. But see how it's not quite up against the edge? It's not quite up against the edge here. So that's why we're going to be pressing it with the, with the coin ring handle. I'll we'll just push everything into place and then we can trim it down and get it cleaned up and ready to go. Let's clean up, get rid of this extra on the side, we'll move on to antiquing. Now that we have it sanded nice and smooth, we're going to round off the inside and the outside with a file and then clean it up and then throw this thing in some antique and then finish this ring up. All right, so we're gonna put a couple of drops of this liver of sulfur into our, into our hot water. And this is going to make the antiquing solution we're going to use to get the black antique finish into all the incused design of our incused Indian. Let that sit in there for about a minute or so. All right, that is good and dark now. It's looking pretty cool already. So now what we're gonna do is take some sandpaper and sand off all the black except for leaving all the design inside the low spots. I'm debating whether or not I should polish the outside of the silver or not. I'm definitely going to polish the inside of the gold, but the outside of the silver, should I leave it flat or not? I don't know. Let's just finish it with a little bit of steel wool to see how that looks. We might leave it.
Yeah, I think I'm going to leave that. I like that a lot. Sometimes when you polish silver, it just gets way too bright looking. It doesn't look nearly as good as if you leave it like a brush finish like this. That's looking really cool. Okay, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to polish the inside of that gold liner and we'll be good to go. We'll be done. Oh, that's looking really good already. Ooh, that's looking really good. That's a gorgeous ring. All right, time to get some pictures of it. All right, this ring turned out great, and I had a fantastic time making it. Make sure you check out my website, changeyoucanwear.net. You can check out all the rings I have for sale there. And if you guys are interested in learning how to do this yourself, obviously I'm doing how-to videos on this, so check out my older videos. And I get most of my tools from Pepe Tools and Jason's Works. So Jason's website is jasons.works. And I'll have links for both of those in the description box below. And I think I have a Pepe Tools discount code still, so I'll make sure I put that in there. And the music I've been using lately comes from Licked. It's a really cool music platform where you actually get music that's on the radio and you can license it for pretty inexpensively. And the big announcement that I have, I'm actually starting a jewelry apprenticeship next week. So I'm gonna start learning all the high-end jewelry techniques and methods, and I'm gonna start using them on my channel. I have another channel, a vlog channel, that I haven't used in forever, that I had my backstory on there a while ago, so you guys can go check that out. I'll have the link in the description box below for that. But I'm gonna use that channel to chronicle my progress as I go and learn this completely new skill. And what I'm hoping is you guys will follow along with me and as I'm learning, you'll be learning also. You can reinvent yourself. You can have the ability to reinvent yourself and do something that you actually love to do. And you don't have to be stuck doing what you hate. And I find that really exciting. So follow along with me, check out that new channel, and hopefully we can learn something together here. All right guys, thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.